Daggerheart is out and is building up quite some hype. It's fantastic at collaborative storytelling and incentivizing players to engage with the story. And with all that focus on role-playing, I know everyone is asking the real question. How do I optimize Daggerheart characters? Yeah, yeah, I know it's a game that focuses on story narrative, but there's no doubt that combat is a big focus when, I don't know, 90% of the book is dedicated to it. And if you've ever watched Critical Role, you know they like their combat. And that isn't changing. Sure, Daggerheart is less crunchy than D&D, but there's still a lot of room to make the most of your character options. So the best way to compare options is if we have some objective numbers to help us. Of course, it isn't all about damage, but it's definitely a good place to start. Let's look at how we can give a number to our damage. Daggerheart damage is quite different from most mainstream games. Traditionally, in most games, we calculate damage by finding the average damage of our attack and multiplying it by our chance to land that attack. But with Daggerheart, we can't use average damage because it will always land us in the same damage threshold. In Daggerheart, when you damage an enemy, that is compared to the enemy's thresholds to see how hard it impacts them. So 20 damage to one enemy might take out three of their hit points, but 20 damage to another enemy might only take out one of their hit points. So to find out the average hit points that we will take out, what we need to do is calculate the probability that we deal minor, major, or severe damage. Then we can get our expected damage on a success, or the expected hit points we take out on a success. Minor is 1 HP, major is 2 HP, and severe is 3 HP. So we multiply those by the respective chance of hitting each of those thresholds. So let's say we have a 25% chance to do minor damage, 50% chance to do major damage, and 25% to do severe. Then that's 0.25 times 1, plus 0.5 times 2, plus 0.25 times 3, and that equals 2. So when we land that hit, we would expect them to lose 2 hit points because of it. Then we can take that and multiply it by our chance to land that hit. So if we have a 75% chance to land the attack, we multiply that by 2, or the expected hit points they would lose, to get 1.5. So now every time we use the attack, we expect to have them lose 1.5 HP. Okay, awesome. So now for the tough part. How do we find the probability that the damage will end up as minor, major, or severe? Well, there's no good way to do it, so we just guess. Ha! <laughs> Did you really think I was going to say that? What we have to do is look at our damage formula and find the probability of every single outcome and compare it to that threshold. So for example, if we have 1d6 of damage, then we have a 1 out of 6 chance to deal 1 damage, 1 out of 6 chance to do 2 damage, etc. If we have 2d6, we have a higher chance of getting 7 than we do of 2 or 12, and the probability ends up looking like this triangle. So we can see that the formula for the damage matters a lot. But then once we have that distribution, we can calculate the probability that it will land at every single damage number, and then compare it to those thresholds. Then we sum up the minor, major, and severe probabilities to get that same math we talked about before. So it ends up being a lot of work and tricky to tell the difference between two attacks or weapons. So I made a tool to help with that. This is the Daggerheart Damage Calculator. Wow. Free for anyone to use and the link is below. The left side here is about our character and their damage and the attacks that they're doing. This section over here is for the enemy we are targeting with our effect. So a lot of these things can be automatic based on tier. So we can select tier one, two, three, four, or we can manually enter all these values here. So if we want to manually set a particular monster that has five difficulty, 20, 30 thresholds, we can do that here by selecting manual. Then we can also trigger if it's solo or not. So average enemies versus solo enemies, they give different thresholds. So it gives you an idea of what the range of difficulties in that tier are. So let's say we're on tier two. We can see the difference between a standard monster and a solo monster's difficulty and their thresholds. 
these things here are the probability that we will land in a minor, major, or severe damage thresholds. And then this down here is our expected damage on success. We can see here our distribution. So this yellow line here is the major threshold. So anything below it here, all of this area here is gonna be minor damage. Anything between yellow and red, this is our major damage. And then anything above severe is our severe. So we basically take all those, sum them up, and we can see them added up here. Then we take all those and multiply them by their respective HP that they would lose. And then we get our expected damage on our success. So if this attack hits 2d12 plus 3, we would expect to deal 1.79 damage. Now here, we don't have any check versus the difficulty, meaning this is an automatic hit. If we need to roll to see if we hit or not, then the expected damage that we actually do down here will change. So here we have expected damage if we hit, and here we have expected damage total. So let's add in a attack roll here. So we have a plus three to attack. We end up with a 65.3% chance that we will land that attack. So our expected damage we deal is 1.17 whenever we make an attack. Now we can add a bunch of other things here too. So this is attack. This basically is asking if it's a if it can crit. So here we can check that. If it can crit, then we have another distribution here showing when we crit, we can add additional dice damage. So the chance that we get into severe goes up quite a bit. Then there are some things that are not attacks. They are reaction rolls. So maybe we make a check to see if this spell goes and then they make a reaction roll to see if they will dodge it or not. So if they can dodge it with a DC 13, they have a 40% chance to dodge and they take zero damage if they do dodge it. So then we would expect to deal 0.7 damage. Now if they would take some damage when they succeed and do dodge it, we can click this half on success. And then when they succeed, they will lose on average one HP. So that boosts our expected damage to 0.97. Now I also do have this nifty thing down here showing if we were to increase or decrease our attack modifier by a little bit, how impactful is that to our expected damage? So this is like if we have a monster that is out of the normal difficulty, what would we expect our damage to look like? Or if we were to add our experiences to our attack roll, how beneficial is that? So we can see here our expected damage goes up the higher our attack mod is. If it's not actually an attack check, then it should be a straight line. I actually initially built this calculator to evaluate Fireball. If you're not familiar with the Daggerheart Fireball, it sounds crazy. It's an at-will ability, so it doesn't consume any hope, it doesn't add any stress to you. And it's an area of effect, and it does D20s of damage, your proficiency. So it feels so much stronger than anything else in Daggerheart. I felt I have to calculate it and check. Are the designers totally out of their minds? How it works is we make a spell cast roll against a target. So we'll check that it is a check versus difficulty. On a success, you hurl the fire. The target and all creatures within close, very close range make a reaction roll 13. Okay, so we'll say it has a reaction roll with the DC of 13. Targets who fail take d20 plus 5 magic damage using your proficiency. Okay, so this is a third level, so we're going to get that in tier 2. So let's say our proficiency is 2. So it'll be 2d20 plus 5. Then it says targets who succeed take half damage. So we'll do half on success. Okay, so this is against a tier 2 enemy and a standard enemy. So let's take a look at this damage distribution. So it looks very likely that we're going to hit their severe threshold and do three HP worth of damage. So that ends up being 77.3% chance to do severe damage. So our expected damage on success, that would be if we make our spell cast roll and if they fail their reaction. Then we do on average 2.76 damage on this fireball when it succeeds to the area. 
Unfortunately though, we have a chance to fail in two different ways. So we have a 72% chance that we do succeed here. They also have a 40% chance to dodge. So when they do dodge, they take half damage and it ends up being 1.83 expected on a dodge. Adding those all together, so when we cast Fireball, we expect it to take out 1.72 hit points. So looking at this damage distribution, it seems very strong. But I want to check that versus a weapon attack in tier 2 and, and see what that looks like. So let's compare it to something really strong. Uh, let's say uh, Warhammer here. So that's a D12 plus 6 physical. So that's kind of the strongest physical weapon we can get. Can this compare to Fireball? Well, again, we're going to have the same proficiency. So it'll be 2d12 plus 6. It is a check and it's an attack. Uh, and it's not a reaction. It doesn't do half damage on a save. Okay. I do want to say Fireball, I do not believe qualifies for an attack, meaning it can crit. Because the spell cast check doesn't do damage in itself. It just sees if the Fireball works. Anyway, leave a comment if you think that's wrong. But here we are right now. So we have a much lower probability that we deal severe damage. So when we have a total success, we expect it to take out around two and a half points of the enemy's HP. Add in the probability to hit and we end up with 1.79. So whenever we swing this Warhammer, we expect it to take out 1.79 HP of an enemy. So that actually ends up doing more damage than a fireball. And I was very surprised at this. Of course, fireball is an area and it's a ranged attack. So yes, it has those big bonuses there that a Warhammer is just not competing against. But this proves to me the point of the calculator. It's very hard to guess how much damage we're going to do based on what the rolls are. So yeah, I guess fireball is kind of balanced. I still think it should require some resources, but you know, whatever. Anyway, I hope this is a useful tool for the Daggerheart community. I'll probably make more Daggerheart videos because I like the system and I think it's fun. So we'll see what we can optimize. If you have any suggestions or you find any issues with the calculator, please email me at dndunoptimized at gmail.com and we'll see if I can address them. But enjoy and happy optimizing.